All right, we're here. Hope you're all doing well today. Let's talk about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That is up on the schedule for this Friday afternoon. Not really much of an intro thing, just kind of want to get down to business. This is, of course, the sequel to Black Panther from 2018. Uh, and after that, we all know the legendary Chadwick Boseman passed on from cancer. And here we are. How do you move on with a franchise with such an integral, the most integral part of it missing? And if you move on from it in the way in that handles it in a more classy fashion, uh, is it going to be able to be well done almost you know what i mean because it's kind of they're kind of mutually exclusive things you can do it in the classy way but can it make sense in the realm of the story and you know what i think they did accomplish that i think they did really accomplish integrating chadwick into the story and and having his presence still there as corny as that may sound i am genuine being genuine here um without actually including him because it's because some people were like oh let's cgi him in there and that's obviously a terrible idea but i really do appreciate the way that marvel handled the situation that being said there is still a movie here to review and unfortunately i can't give the same level of praise to the movie itself but let's talk about that starting off with the positives in my opinion this film is hard carried and i mean hard carried by three distinct entities two of them are people once an entity uh the first one being the entity is the cast uh just like the first film the this group of people works so well together Letitia Wright, Lupita Nyong'o, Winston Duke, Angela Bassett, they all body their roles completely. It is so impressive to see the cohesion that they have together as a unit. It is really like these people have grown up with each other and lived with each other for long periods of time and the connection that they all have between the, the, all of them is is just magnificent to watch on screen and really really got me going not only was the cohesion amazing but the performances were amazing specifically Angela Bassett Angela Bassett with every line that she delivers commands a detention from an audience member she com she commands your attention she enthralls you and engulfs you in this very powerful tense atmosphere that that impressed me to absolutely no end Letitia Wright kind of taking the main mantle here kind of of you know the 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 main character protagonist role vibe thing she did a very good job at doing that as well Lapita Inyango shows up and she is wonderful as well uh, so many just really really good performances Winston Duke good good solid uh, comedic relief I had such a good time just watching them all on screen together, uh, except for one, and we'll get there later, and it's not an original film member, anyways. And the next person who is to be commended is Autumn Durald, who is the cinematographer of the movie, and let me tell you, this is the first movie that, and I've seen most of the movies in the MCU, of the MCU that I watched and I said, this feels like a movie, like a real movie, not a superhero product thingamajig that has its own distinct style. This felt cinematic to its core, every shot interwoven with the next, working perfectly together. Sometimes the editing was a little bit off, but the ways that the shots wove into each other was still brilliant. Breath taking visuals the underwater scenes are gorgeous insanely gorgeous the, the wide shots some of these these reflections that are captured off of the water some of these oh my gosh impeccable cinematography and if it doesn't get nominated for an oscar considered the fact that Black Panther got nominated for basically everything in 2018, I'll be kind of disappointed because this was breathtaking. So absolute congratulations to Autumn Durald for a wonderful 
job on the film, frankly. <laughs> um, and she is also someone who has done the Gia Coppola films, which is mainstream, but most importantly, Palo Alto. And Palo Alto definitely had a vision to it uh, that I loved. So I, it, it's not a surprise to me, but I am incredibly impressed. And in my opinion, the third and final carry of this film belongs to Ludwig Göransson, who, if you don't know, which you should, is the composer of the score and he also did the original Black Panther. But there's a difference between that and Wakanda Forever, and that is that I think that in the original Black Panther, the soundtrack kind of overwhelmed the score in, in a positive way, uh, even though the score was really solid and deserved a lot of the recognition that it got. Uh, I would maybe argue uh, Academy Award score, but it was really, really good. Uh, but the Kendrick Lamar produced soundtrack, especially with that one track from SOB and RB, there was so much going on, on there, uh, King's Dead, so many amazing songs in that film that it kind of overshadows a little bit just from the sheer magnitude of it, the positive nature and instrumental way that the score in the film maneuvers its way through. That being said, it really sticks out here and he definitely gets his moment in the sun. This is, I think, better than the original Black Panther soundtrack. And the use of vocals uh, as instruments is something that I always love, but it's always a very difficult thing to manage and master. And it is done masterfully here, I would say. And it's so good, in fact, that I was distracted when actual songs from the soundtrack came on because they had n nowhere near the amount of gravitas that the score songs did. And they took me out of it kind of a little bit every time that they did come on. So shout out to Ludwig Gorenson for what I would argue is at, at least fringe Oscar nom. Uh, brilliance. And here is where we start to uh, go into the negatives of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I know this is going to sound a little too tired, but it is something that I do notice every time Marvel comes out with a movie. And I have to say it, it's just kind of a Marvel movie again on a pure story structure level. And I didn't think it was going to actually. In the first 20 to like 30 minutes of the film, I was in awe. I was all in. I was ready to go. And then I realized the reason why I was so invested, thinking that this could be a different experience than the norm normal Marvel film, is because there really wasn't that much dialogue. The dialogue that was said was said with urgency and the amazing acting from the actors can overwhelm the mediocre dialogue that is really out of its depth here. You're tackling subjects such as grief, such as loss, such as vengeance and you really need to have the right dialogue to tackle those things. And you can tell that Ryan Coogler is really out of his depth here, uh, writing-wise. I wish that he wasn't because he has such an immense passion for the film that, or for the franchise, that is just so commendable. But he is a little bit uh, swimming in the deep end here when he's used to shallow. This, this is not at all great dialogue. In fact, I'd argue it's bad and the pacing in the first half going along with that dialogue is actually pretty well done and then in the second half it just loses it completely and it starts stumbling over itself to the point where it's lost itself so bad that there is like a mid-2000s teamwork montage thing with an inspirational song in the background and i'm like where did this come from? This doesn't have any significance to what's going on here and does not tonally fit in with the messages that are trying to be portrayed. It's corny as hell. And I felt really bad. And also, no reason for this film to be two hours and 40 minutes. None whatsoever. This could have been a two hour movie and we, I would have been perfectly fine with that. There's a bunch of monologuing uh, at certain points that's just not necessary. There's a really, really weird 
section that's thrown in there uh, in relation to another character in the franchise who I guess I won't spoil, but that is just not necessary at all. It does not add anything. You could convey the same message that you're trying to get across there without that person being introduced into the fray. And it's as simple as that. It does follow the same Marvel guidelines, the same cut and paste Premiere Pro template emotional beats Marvel thing that's been going on. But God, does it have a gorgeous exterior to counteract that. But on the inside, it's still a Marvel movie, and that's what gets me, man. I'm waiting for one of these directors to get this complete creative freedom to just make whatever they want and to not have to mold their vision into a Marvel PG-13 friendly family experience uh, mold, essentially. Uh, so ultimately, at the end of the day, I am going to give Black Panther Wakanda Forever a 5 out of 10. It is a really f good time, for the most part, until like this, like after two hours, it just really just drags, drags. But I, I enjoyed myself. Definitely go see this in the theater, 1 million percent. The only reason to go see this is in a theater. Frankly, I wouldn't say, oh, you know, just... I, I, this isn't something that I'd be like, oh, I want to watch this at home, unless I had like an OLED TV or something like that, or QLED, whatever. Uh, but no, this is meant for the big screen. It is a spectacle. It is gorgeous. But on the inside, there's just not enough there to keep up with the outside. Uh, but overall, it's a solid film. And if I can't get something groundbreaking, I will always take a solid film from Marvel over their usual bullshit. So that is it for this video. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. I'm interested on this one to know because I feel like you go either way. I've seen some not great reviews. I've seen some really good reviews, but I'm just interested. Next up will be a very fun surprise rant video about a person that I may have talked about on this channel before that I'm already editing right now. So yeah. That's it. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.